when I finished my course with Jeff Lawton and, and was here in, in Nicaragua, I was very excited and enthusiastic to get started. And so I was watching a lot of YouTube videos and, and I kept hearing people talking about cover crops. Oh, you have to have cover crops. Howdy everybody, I'm back after another long hiatus. We had a number of challenges we were facing uh, that prevented us from really producing videos for a while, um, including uh, some internet problems, so I have to apologize for that, and we're going to try to do better. But uh, I'm here today to talk about cover crops, and I'm going to say at the outset that I don't use cover crops. Now, I don't have anything against cover crops, so don't don't mistake me about that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk about them right now. But we don't use them, and there's a, there's a reason for it that I'm going to explain. So what is a cover crop? A cover crop is basically any, usually annual crop. You want it to be an annual because you want to be able to kill it. You don't want it to just keep growing. So it's usually an annual crop that you plant in between when you're planting your your market crops or the crops for your garden for food that you want to eat. So let's say that you have a, a garden bed or, or a bed of uh, tomatoes. The tomatoes are now finished. You've cleared all the, the tomato plants out and all, all the, the dying tomato plants and, and what have you. You have bare ground there. Well, nature doesn't like there to be bare, bare ground. And if you don't cover it, if you don't do something, nature is going to cover it for you. And, it's gonna, and she's going to cover it with weeds. So the cover crop is there to make sure that the weeds don't take hold in that space. So you can use it again next year. Okay, so that's, that's one major use of, of a cover crop. It's just to put something there until you're ready to use the land for something productive for you. So the second, second major one is to usually add nitrogen, but, but to, to add nutrients to the soil. So many times you can put nitrogen-fixing plants uh, in the pea family or the Legumaceae uh, family, and those will add nitrogen. And so, again, you're going to plant those. You're either going to plant them around the edge of your regular market crop, or you're going to plant them through there uh, in opposite rows or you're going to wait until you're finished with the market crop and you're going to plant everything with, uh, with nitrogen fixing plants like vetch and clover and, and other things like that. So that's another, uh, you're, going to, you're going to cut those before they have a chance to flower and seed and, and it's going to supply a mulch. And that mulch is going to be a green mulch and it's going to be a, a nitrogen-rich mulch. Now, related to that is you may want a deep mulch in your in your area, and so you may use something like sorghum Sudan grass or some other plant that is going to provide a lot of biomass. So you're going to either either crimp that, you're going to roll it to kill it, or you're going to mow it. You're not going to kill it with, with pesticide, herbicides, that's not the way to go. But you're going to, you're going to have to kill it. Now, in traditional farming, and I shouldn't say traditional because it really isn't traditional. So let me, let me back up and rephrase that. In industrial farming, what they do is they, they, they will plant their corn or wheat or, or whatever it is their main crop is, they'll harvest that crop and then they'll plant a cover crop behind it. Okay. 
then they then they will till that land they'll till the cover crop into the ground and that's the way that they kill it okay well you don't really want to till in the ground because that destroys the soil food web and you don't want to destroy that so as I said there was a time that I believed that I needed to use cover crops here on this land and I was absolutely obsessed about it but what I didn't bother to think about was what my context was I didn't clearly think through the context and I've described that to you in other videos we have incredibly lush uh, biomass uh, around here right now because we're in the in the wet season in the dry season everything dies we get no rain we get scorching sun hot weather v very few things will actually grow in that kind of a climate uh, aside from things like uh, like cactus uh, that things in the cactus family and I'm not interested in planting uh, a whole farm full of things in the cactus family just for the the dry season because I know when the wet season comes, I'm going to have plenty of stuff. So that, that's the issue that I didn't consider. And so I was rushing around. And uh, this is a good example of, of me jumping on to what was a fad. A fad in permaculture. A lot of people were talking about cover crops. And I jumped onto the fad without really thinking about it. And thinking through it. So, first of all, if you're going to use a cover crop, you want, to, you want to be clear about what your goal is for using that cover crop. You know, if you want a thick mulch, a lot of biomass that is going to give you a thick mulch, then you're not going to plant rye, ryegrass, for example, which isn't going to give you a, a thick mulch. Ryegrass uh, decomposes very quickly. It's it's kind of fluffy and, uh, and and what have you. You want something more substantial like sorghum Sudan grass. Uh, there's other things as well. Uh, sun hemp, uh, if if it'll grow where you are, or or maybe you want to increase the 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 nutrient uh, in your soil, and so then you're going to plant a cover crop that is heavy in nitrogen fixing organisms and and other things like Tithonia diversifolia that I talked about in another video that that will give you phosphorus in the soil you want to make sure those things are in there so the take-home lesson is any plant can be a cover crop <laughs> there's some that are much better much better at it than others that are much better suited to certain goals than others are but virtually any plant can be a cover crop and that's what I finally realized about the farm here that I already had my cover crop here I didn't have to go out and buy a lot of uh, a lot of seed now do I try to to introduce new new things of course I do but I'm not specifically trying to come behind uh, with a cover crop and there's a good reason for that because I primarily am focused on growing fruit trees which is a whole different uh, situation than growing annual vegetables for example if you're growing annual vegetables you have to make sure that year after year after year you're you're increasing or or at least adding organic matter to your soil so that it will keep producing for you well I don't have to be as concerned about that I make these crop circles like I did in, in another video that that helps to capture water and and keeps nutrients in a certain area by the fruit tree but but beyond that I don't really need it I, I have I already have the cover crop I just need to make sure that the soil is covered uh, in the summer when things start dying I want to make sure that that I have things living here that will help to cover the soil and I already have that and as a matter of fact at the beginning were things that types of grass and what have you that I was trying to get rid of 
I didn't like them uh, until I realized their value. And one of those, of course, I talked about in a recent video was, was a tree, Gluricidia sepium, an incredibly useful tree uh, in, in permaculture. And if you have access to it, if it'll grow where you are, I highly recommend uh, uh, taking advantage of that, of, of that resource. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit more of my story with Gluricidia sepium uh, now. Now, when I first got started, when, uh, when I finished my course with, with Jeff Lawton and, and was here in, in Nicaragua, I was very uh, excited and enthusiastic to get started. And so I was watching a lot of YouTube videos and, and I kept hearing people talking about cover crops. Oh, you have to have cover crops. Well, I mentioned in the last video that our soil here, when we first came, was in horrible shape. It was just dirt and rocks, very hard. You, you literally could play a basketball game on the soil. It was that hard. And, and over time, we have, uh, we've, we've done some things to help uh, add carbon to the soil and help retain carbon in the soil like the crop circle that I did in the, in the previous uh, video. But I got influenced. Um, one of the things about being autistic is that we're very easily influenced uh, by, by, by people that kind of sound like they, they know what they're doing. Or We're just very easily influenced. We get distracted fairly, fairly easily. And I have to fight against that uh, constantly. And one of the things that I got uh, distracted with was this idea that the only way that I could improve the soil here was through the use of cover crops. And the cover crops that everybody was talking about weren't available here. I'd have to order them, which means that I have to pay more for them, I have to wait for them to arrive, I don't know what kind of condition that the seeds are going to come in and, and all of that. But on top of that, there are things that don't normally grow here. But, but I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and it seemed like nothing worked. And then one day, I got to thinking, and I said, you know, I have, I, I have all kinds of uh, biomass here on the farm. There has to be some nitrogen-fixing species here. And so I started studying them, and I realized that I had some Gluricidia sepins trees. And I said, I've hit the gold mine. And so the next thing I did was, was when those trees started producing pods with seeds in them, I went out around and collected as many pods, seed pods as I could. I planted Gluricidia sepins every place on the farm that I could think of. On the swales, around the perimeter, uh, all over the place. Now I have some Lucana too, but uh, like I said, I, I like the Gluricidia sepins better, uh, only, only because it's, for me, it's easier to work with. But, but the, the, the benefit of this is, is that you can, you can chop it, you can chop it up in, in like a wood chipper and literally make compost with it. So, so that's why I like it. Uh, everybody has their preferences and it just so happens that uh, this tree was growing naturally here. There weren't so too many of them until I expanded them greatly all over the, all over the farm. And I'm gonna tell you about some other things that I discovered as I was looking for things that were already growing on the land here that, uh, that could act, that could become cover crops. Uh, that I could simply expand and use them more in a cover crop type of, type of way. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I don't use cover crops. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't use them. I don't use them because I considered my goals, I considered my circumstances, my context here, 
and I realize that I already had everything that I need to accomplish what I want. I didn't really need to bring in other species uh, to plant. So you need to make that determination for your own situation where you are. And then be clear about what your goal is. You know, is it going to be to have a, a heavy mulch at the end of the cover crop? That's going, to, that's going to guide you to the type of plants that you use. Is it to increase the amount of nitrogen uh, and other nutrients? That's going to guide you again to the type of plants that you're going to use in the, in the cover crop mix. And again, you want to make sure it's a mix. Don't just plant one thing. That's a monocrop. And that's just as bad as, as filling acres and acres full of corn uh, or wheat. Make it a mix of, of things, different species. So I'm not against cover crops. As a matter of fact, I, in, in certain circumstances, they are definitely the best way to go. In my circumstance in the tropics here, where we have wet, dry season, no, it, does, it, it, it just doesn't uh, work very well for me here. So. That's the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.